Hello everyone and welcome back to another daily video. This week of course we're talking about the feast days and it's so exciting to be able to share this subject with you. I've had a lot of requests uh, for this subject, a lot of questions have been asked and so I thought we'd spend a little time to get into a little bit more detail. Um, as I said yesterday, uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here at uh, just search Daniel Rogers Eschatology or something like that and it'll, it'll come up. You'll see my beautiful face <laughs> with my more beautiful wife right there on the picture so uh, you can be sure to <laughs> you can be sure to, uh, to subscribe to that channel and you'll get the notification as the videos are posted all right yesterday we talked about Passover and unleavened bread today we're going to talk about first fruits and Pentecost we're covering the spring feast days so far the spring feast days focus on the death burial resurrection and ascension of Jesus the fall feast days um, focus on the the second coming of Christ, uh, the resurrection, and the um, the tabernacling of God with man. So let's get to it. The Feast of First Fruits. As all these feast days, it has a Hebrew name that I'm not going to dare to pronounce, and <laughs> it can be found uh, as the others can in Leviticus chapter 23, 10 to 14. The Feast of First Fruits, as as far as I understand, all right. This is how I understood the the text to read. The day after the first Sabbath, following the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. That is, the first Sunday after the first Sabbath, following the Feast of Unleavened Bread, with Pentecost taking place 50 days after that. Uh, this is a feast that uh, remembers Israel passing through the Red Sea, being baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 and following. In the New Testament, however, in the antitype, or uh, you know what's what what it is that's casting the shadow, the substance, is Jesus being the first to be raised from the dead. Uh, the Bible tells us that he that he was such um, in Acts, <coughs> in Paul's trials in Acts uh, chapter twenty four and Acts chapter twenty six. We also know that to be the case from First Corinthians fifteen twenty three. Here's an important thing to notice, though. Jesus was not the first to be raised from physical death. Jesus, in fact, himself had, ra had raised many people from physical death uh, during his time and his ministry. Not only that, but individuals received uh, life from the grave in the Old Testament as well. All right. However, however, Jesus was the first to overcome the Hadean realm. And he was the first to overcome the death of Adam. Think about this, all right? Jesus' death was a substitutionary death, which means that Jesus' death had to be likened unto our own. Now, if we ask the question, is physical death the enemy of man? The Bible gives us a resounding no, at least to the faithful. Paul begs for it in Philippians chapter 1. He longs to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Peter looked forward to his death in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1. All right, He was going to put off uh, this tabernacle, as he said. We have other um, affirmations from individuals in the, in the church who were looking forward uh, to their death or who did not think of death as being something you know, that was a bad thing. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. Blessed are they who die in the Lord from now on. However, spiritual death is very much so the enemy of man. Because it is spiritual death that separates us from God. Jesus, in taking on our sins, as the Bible says uh, that he did, he became sin for us, as Second Corinthians chapter 5 and the last verse of that chapter uh, tells us. He, he died in our place. He spoke on the cross, uh, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The end of that psalm points out to us that there would be hope for him yet, and that hope was, of course, his resurrection um, out of that death. And so the Bible tells us that Jesus is the first to be raised. And because he is raised, John chapter 12 tells us many other people follow. And we know that we do follow. Because the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2 that we can be risen with Christ through obedience to the gospel. The Bible says the same thing in Romans chapter 6 uh, and verse 3 and 4. He says, Know you not that so many of us as are baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? 
therefore were buried with him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If I don't have to die physically to die with Christ, then I don't have to be risen physically to be risen with Christ. It takes place through response to the gospel. And because of that, uh, we can look at this Feast of first fruits and know what it means. We know that because Jesus was the first to be raised, there would be a harvest to follow. And that harvest, we see part of it on the Feast of Pentecost, where the first fruits were offered up um, in Leviticus 23, 15-22. It talks about uh, this feast is looking at the giving of the law, and it points to the giving of the Holy Spirit whenever the first fruits were presented. And the Bible tells us in the book of James, chapter 118, that James and the other first century uh, Jewish believers who were, who were converted at the, at the beginning of the apostles' ministry were that grain offering to the Lord. They were the kind of first fruits of his uh, new creation. And so what we see then, <coughs> excuse me, I still got this cough. My throat doesn't hurt. And last week I wasn't physically sick, like I didn't feel, you know, run down as much. Mainly the situation was I just had a sore throat and it was, it was awful. But I didn't feel I could like go out and do stuff, I just couldn't talk <laughs> that, that well. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to it here. Um, so the Feast of First Fruit points to the presentation of Jesus Christ and His resurrection. The Feast of First Fruits points to this first fruit harvest that the Holy Spirit, you know, brought about. Uh, through his being poured out poured out onto the apostles. And it would be the Holy Spirit that would continue to bring people into uh, the life of Christ to leading up to the time of the end. The Bible tells us that the gospel of the kingdom would be preached to the whole world as a witness to the nations. Then comes the end. And so it's the Holy Spirit that brings about this resurrection, as we see him doing even in Christ, as Romans chapter 1 tells us. So that's the feast of uh, first fruits, and that's the feast of Pentecost. All right, that's the spring feast days. Very short, very quick, to the point. But I hope that uh, it was beneficial to you. Again, you can go to my website, labornotinvain.com. You can click on search, search for the term feast days, and you're going to be able to find um, an audio download, a lesson PowerPoint download. And if you search that same term on YouTube with my name attached, so if you search Daniel Rogers Feast Days, you're going to be able to find uh, a, the video presentation that I did. Um, and you can always read, read along this PowerPoint here. Where is it there? <laughs> this PowerPoint along there with it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day, and God bless you very much. Um, while you're still here, I know you're could be gone, but while you're still here, please consider making a small financial donation, uh, either a recurring monthly donation or maybe a one-time donation to my, me and my uh, wife's ministry. We're going to be going through a very important transition in our time, uh, in our lives next month. I'll announce more about that later uh, as the details become more certain and more clear. And so we could use all the help we can get uh, moving through that time. Well, anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed it, and God bless.